Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss the new Fusion Wired Fight Pad from Power A. In this video specifically, we'll look at the version for Nintendo Switch and why this is not only one of the best pads available for fighting game fans, but also just an excellent option for Switch gamers wanting a solid D-pad. So to start off with, I, I did want to discuss what the controller is intending to be and what it's not intending to be. So this controller is not meant to be a replacement for the Switch Pro controller. So it's not going to have things like rumble, amiibo support, gyro controls, analogs, or Bluetooth. What this controller is intending to be is essentially a modernization of the Model, model 2 Sega Saturn controller, a bit with a bit more of a, a premium feel to it. So I did have an example of the old Model 2 Saturn pad, and you can see the main features are, you know, besides the overall shape, is the floating D-pad, and then they have the six face buttons here. So I did want to start off, um, there are a couple of things I disliked about the power, so I wanted to get those out of the way first. One of those is going to be related to the USB cable. So this USB cable, it is high quality in that it's braided, it's pretty thick and it's uh, three meters or about 9.8 feet. Um, the main thing I didn't like is this proprietary snap lock feature. So you can kind of see there's these little tabs you depress in on and those make the sides more flush and to be able to push it in and out of the controller. There's a couple times that this got stuck to the point where I needed to use pliers to get it out. So I don't know if that was the intention, but just uh, to alleviate any concerns around that, I did try a generic, uh, this is just a, a micro USB port. So I found a, you know, one that was on one of my old phones and connected it to the fight pad to the switch and it worked perfectly fine. Um, I don't know if Powerade recommends that, but I did t test it for a couple of hours. I didn't have any sort of issues with it. Another item I did want to point out is just the, the sensitivity of these buttons L and R. So you kind of see just how little movement it takes to activate. You really cannot rest your fingers on these during gameplay. You're going to get accidental um, activations. This wasn't a problem for me because my fingers just naturally kind of fell onto the triggers ZL and ZR. But if you're somebody with smaller hands or maybe if you tend to like to just play with your fingers up here instead, this could be a problem unless you deactivate those buttons. It's very hard when you're actually doing motions to not depress those buttons. And the final thing, the only other thing I wasn't too crazy about was just the fact that they put triggers on here in the first place. I would have preferred them being additional buttons instead. This is a fight pad and you don't really need triggers in a fighting game, but this does kind of make it more compatible with some other games, so I can't complain too much there. And the main feature that I wanted was the six buttons across. So what I liked about the controller, one, the D-pad. This D-pad is one of the best uh, fight pad D-pads I've ever used on any controller. Very similar to the Saturn, except it does have a bit more motion to it. Um, it's raised a little bit higher. Um, there's a very strong center pivot, so you can't press down on this at all. And this just lends itself for really good accuracy. I use this fight pad on everything from Super Turbo, Third Strike, Alpha 3, Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, I was doing Super Dashes and Fighter Z, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, what else? Uh, I actually bought KOF or King of Fighters 98 from the eShop just to try some of their more complex motions. And everything came off without a hitch. This is a very good D-pad for fighters and it's very comfortable too. It's a matte finish. Your fingers just kind of glide along it. Um, it's, it's very comfortable for lawn extended use. Um, the buttons themselves are also nice and responsive. And I like that they modernize this by not sticking to the, the Saturn where they had kind of the uh, different shapes of the buttons. Let me get that back up here. You know, they had the tops being small and convex and the bottoms large and concave. I'm happy that they just went for you know, having all of them uniform, it made more sense to me. So along with that modernization is the overall grip. So you can see the Power A, it's a lot thicker and it's a little bit heavier as well, but just the right amount of weight. As opposed to uh, the Saturn pad, you know, it's a lot thinner in general. 
And I think that's something that doesn't really get discussed a whole lot when we're talking about retro fighting game pads. It wasn't really until probably the Xbox that you really had more comfortable controllers with ergonomic grip on you know a regular basis. So I like that Power A decided to uh, feel free to take the parts that you know we really loved about the Saturn pad with the layout, but weren't afraid to kind of modernize it a bit for additional comfort. And uh, another option actually that I liked a lot was just these interchangeable face plates. And this is something where I felt that Powerade really showed how this is kind of a more premium controller. You know, a lot of uh, interchangeable fa uh, face plates, they are, are plasticky with little clips, and it can almost feel like you're about to break them when you're interchanging them. This actually uses magnets. So five little magnets on the underside of each face plate come off very easily, and you can literally just kind of drop it on. And it stays on too. So the fact that it's so easy to change these out, this is probably one of the first times I'll ever have, you know, a controller I can change face plates that I'll actually use that feature because it's it's so simple and easy to use. Also, another feature I like is a feature that was commonly seen on fight sticks, but not as, as often on fight pads. They have this uh, little toggle here to switch the D-pad from functioning as an actual directional pad or the left stick or the right stick. And the use of that in games will vary, but one really cool um, option I found is with Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening as an example. That game, Nintendo oddly enough, didn't include D-pad support and forces you to analog. But with this controller, you can just set it to LS, and now you'll have a D-pad to move Link around for a more traditional feel for those kind of games. They have a similar feature up here, you know, a toggle for more customization. All this toggle does is the C stick on a GameCube controller where you can depress it inward, like on certain Switch games or some of the newer ones, this can be mapped to the R button up here. I couldn't find a whole lot of uses for it. Um, I mean, Breath of the Wild, you know, you can bring out Zoom the Sheikah Slate by doing this, but I wouldn't really want to use this controller in Breath of the Wild anyway, so your, your mileage may vary with that function. Um, aside from that, this is probably, you know, I consider this like a perfect retro controller as well. Um, you can use this for any of the Nintendo or Super Nintendo games online through the Nintendo Switch Online service. Let's go with the Genesis Classics Collection. And then really any of the more retro styled platformers and beat em ups that come out on the Switch quite often. They all felt really good with this type of D pad and this button layout. So, with that, I did want to compare it to a couple of other fight pad options that are available on the Nintendo Switch. Namely, the uh, Retrobit Saturn Pad, and then the Apido M30, mainly because they all had the six button layout and I see a lot of questions on online forums kind of asking to compare these. So I would say the Retrobit, this is just kind of like your bare bones option. It doesn't have all of the bells and whistles of the Power A by far. Um, you know, it doesn't have any of the Pro Controller type buttons and features like the home button and whatnot. Uh, the plastics are okay. It doesn't feel terribly different from the old Saturn pad. It does feel a little bit cheaper. The buttons are a little bit more plasticky for lack of a better word. No improvements to grip or anything like that. But, you know, this is a good economical choice if really all you're trying to get is that layout. And the D-pad is pretty solid for the most part. Um, it's not quite as comfortable as the Power A one. Uh, again, the plastic just doesn't feel as good for circular motions, but it is accurate. Uh, likewise, the Abido M30, and this one's the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, the one that works on Switch is actually Bluetooth, but same form factor, so I figure out showed anyway. Um, I do like this matte plastic a little bit better. It just feels better quality, a little bit more weight to it. The buttons are kind of jiggly. I'm not too sure why that is. Um, aside from that, though, they kind of stuck with the same you know, mismatching buttons, which I'm not too crazy about. Um, and this controller is even smaller than the Saturn one. So my problems with the grip are kind of amplified with the Aethido M30. Might be good if you had smaller hands. D-pad is really accurate. Almost no center pivot though. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem for some people. I didn't have any accuracy concerns, but I see a lot of people that gripe about not having a strong center pivot when that exists. 
Um, still an overall good option. Keep in mind with Bluetooth, you're going to have some minor input latency, usually not more than a frame, but it should be called out just because it's present. So all in all, you know, I actually went into buying this controller with healthy bit of skepticism. You know, it's, it's $59.99 for a wired controller that appears rather minimalist at its face. Uh, but when you actually look at the features, you know, the quality of the material, the well, materials used, the, the feelings of the buttons, uh, the accuracy of the D-pad, and the uh, more premium options like the face plates and everything, um, while I do think $59.99 is pricey for a fight pad, I do not consider this overpriced. I do think you're getting what you pay for, and I feel comfortable, you know, saying that uh, I got my money's worth, and... I would definitely recommend the Power A Fusion Fight Pad for anybody that's serious about fighting games that wants a D-pad that gives a good amount of precision, but also feels comfortable for the long run as well, and introduces some much needed ergonomics into the controller. Um, also worth mentioning, there is a two year warranty that Power A advertises right on the bottom of the box here. So if there are any concerns about durability, since this is a new controller, I can say that anecdotally I've read on Reddit and other forums that Power A is really good about honoring their warranty, kind of a no questions asked sort of policy. So um, I would feel comfortable on that front as well because I can't really comment on durability until this is thoroughly play tested over months. So anyway, that's it for the overview. So feel free to let me know, you know, your questions in the comments or maybe your experiences with the fight pad. And if you enjoyed this video, just let me know as well. This is my first overview for a product, and I would be definitely down to look at some other Switch uh, accessories in the future. Well, thank you, and take care, everyone.